Hello, everyone. This is Bill Stearns, NE4RD, and I'm the co-host of the Linux in the Hamshack podcast. You can find us over at lhspodcast.info. And today I'm going to uh, begin our episode three here with restoring an ADIF file I have from my previous logger into CQR log. And uh, since I had... uh, I had already uh, sent all those contacts up to Logbook of the World and uh, and to uh, EQSL. We're going to flag all those uh, co- uh, those contacts as sent, so that way it doesn't try sending it again. And as well, we're going to go ahead and set up Logbook of the World with my backup file that I have from that as well. Um, it, the first time you run C- Logbook of the World, it, it requires you to either register a certificate or have one. And the easiest way to get one from one box to another is to uh, back up and restore. So that's what we're going to go ahead and try here. So I have CQR log launched here, and uh, we'll just do a quick reminder of the system here. This is our Ubuntu 17.04 system. Just do a screen fetch here for you. And this is running 17.04. It's running uh, Ubuntu Budgie. So uh, again, I I love Budgie, so <laughs> that's what I'm using. We're on an Intel Core i7, a Dell laptop with uh, 32 gigs of RAM. So nothing uh, nothing special has changed since we started this. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. I've already downloaded my ADIF, so we're going to go into CQR log here, and we're going to open up File Show QSO List. So this is uh, where you can see all your QSOs, and you can see I, I kind of snuck one in here. I ended up working a a friend the other uh, the other day on CW in the uh, CW Ops contest. This is a uh, Mike Crown over AD five A. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, import. We're going to go up to File Import ADIF, and I have mine in my Downloads directory, and there it is. It is the any four RD standard. I did export a uh, ADIF one, but we're not going to use that uh, standard ADI file. I'm open that up. And so it gives you here some remarks. You can put something if you want a default comment on this. Like you said, you know, I imported this from, you know, HRD or DX Keeper or Rum Log or, or one of the many other loggers. You don't really have to have that. Um, the QTH profile, if, if all the contacts in the log are from one profile, you know, go ahead and assign that now. Mine are. So, uh, you know, except for when I was in Florida, but I, I don't really care about those. Those have already been sent out. So I'm not not too concerned about uh, those having the wrong uh, QTH profile assigned to them. Um, I'm not really doing any awards tracking from from Florida beyond D, you know DXCC possibly if I if I even entered that stuff in properly. But anyway, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and uh, leave it as uh, default my one QTH here, and we're just gonna hit the import button. And you can see it created uh, 1,440, yeah, sorry, 4,890 records, and uh, it created an errors file. So I'm going to hit close. So you can see uh, it brings in my most recent contacts. And obviously I do a lot of digital, so there you go. No surprise there. So we want to go ahead and update these contacts so it knows that it doesn't have to send these to Logbook of the World again. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, SQL console here, and this is uh, one way to do it. If you uh, want to see your actual data, you can come in here and it grabs uh, the actual screen. So like this is a view, and this is the name of the view that it actually runs to do all the uh, QSOs, or to the, do the query. And yeah, you got a lot of information in here, but basically what I'm looking for is my... Uh, my uh, log book of the world keys. Oh, look at that. It already has an already flagged yes on those. So let's see here. I just want to click out here. This is the log book of the world QSO. QSLs have been sent. This is all flagged yes. So sometimes if you bring in a log that doesn't have that column, it, uh, it will say uh, no there and you'll need to update it. And uh, I don't see the EQSL one. Yep, so EQSL is here as well. And uh, it's sent automatically EQSL because I had set this up with uh, before I had made that contact with 85A. So that's already sent. 
So this is great. So this is, means a lot of stuff you don't have to update. But basically, if you needed to update this, you can actually update, I believe in this view, this column. So you would actually go in and So you can come in and just look at that column alone. And then you can actually set, you can just do an update. CQR log main set log book of the world USLs equals Y and get rid of all that and that will go ahead and flag everything in the entire entire database as uh, sent to logbook of the world so you don't have to do that again and uh, the same you could uh you could send it for for uh, the eqsl if you didn't want to redo all that i have had problems with that in the past of sending duplicate records so it's important that you you maintain uh, the state of your log especially when you're switching logging programs uh, I can't, can't express the importance of that enough. So yeah, you could set the EQSL sent field to Y as well, and that will help prevent uh, any kind of uh, log collisions later on. So, so since ours is already set, I don't have to do that. But what we do have to do is set up Logbook of the World properly. So we're going to go into the Trusted QSL program. And I have run this once, so you, you won't get same messages I will so where are we at here trusted QSL trusted trusted QSL there we go so like here you'll see this error right here you have no call sign certificate installed on your computer would you like to request a call sign certificate now if you have a backup file you do not need to do that so go ahead and hit no And it might complain about an update available since ours is through the repo. You can't really do it that way, so don't. <laughs> if uh, if um, you have to get the latest version, I'll go ahead and show you how to find the, the latest uh, TQSL PPA. Um, but for right now, anything above, I believe, uh, 2.3, which this one is, uh, does report fine to Logbook of the World. You do want to make sure that you uh, you get the updates. And there, well, there is, there's a file update here, but there's also a, a configuration update, which, uh, which will automatically pop up every time you run it to make sure that you have like the latest settings. Like they just recently added FT8 uh, as a mode and stuff like that. So that becomes a valid mode to send to, to, um, to Logbook of the World. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, restore. So this is the backup and then restore. This is my restore here. I'm going to restore my configuration that I had on my other computer. And it's right here. So I'm going to open it up. So what it does is it restores my call sign certificate, my station locations, my preferences, and everything else, all in one fail swoop. So we can see that I have my uh, my my station location set up as my home QTH, which is kind of like why I set my logger up to be the same way. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so basically it's a very simple situation. If you do a backup, that's the way to do it. So same thing, if you wanted to back up the station log, you can go ahead and back it up. And then you could transfer it between computers. So now that that's set up, let's just exit that out. And I, since I want to send this one contact here with uh, 85A in it, I can go ahead and find my little button that says upload data to logbook of the world. So I'm going to do that. Now, this command line here, I've already altered. Inside of this quotes here is where you want that QTH. So the location you're actually going to be sending. So this would be helpful. Let's say you activate mountaintops or, you know, sodas or iotas or you're activating in another state. You would create a new location inside of, uh, you know, inside of uh, Logbook of the World to track those contacts so people could confirm a specific grid square or a specific iota and what what have you so you'll need to change that when you're when you're doing uh specific updates specific uploads and stuff like that so like right now i'm just doing my random setup will be anything that i've worked from the house here so 
everything is set up. So I want only want to export QSOs which have not been have never been uploaded. And that's all I really have to do for the export. And logbook of the world, export and sign is the button. If you have a password on your certificate, it's going to prompt you for it. Okay, and apparently I do have some old stuff in here, so I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to take a look at my log file and see what's going on. So, apparently something is not set to uh is not set to Y. Logbook of the world QSL. So yeah, so I have some old ones here that probably are from my previous call sign, which it is. So what I'm going to do is fix those. So we're going to run an update statement and update CQR log where QSOs equal nothing. And we're going to make a logbook of the world QSLs. QSLs equal yes. And our QSO date is less than We'll just do before my contact with uh, with uh, Mike, and we'll go and execute that. Oh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. You need to set the. You need to type the statement properly and the field name properly. <laughs> so there we go. It, uh, it went ahead and ran. And what we can do is we can uh, take a look at that and see if. So there's nothing in there. We got no records. Just selecting uh, if there's any records that meet that criteria. And uh, we'll go ahead and close. So the, the, the SQL console can be very destructive. You can destroy your, your entire log data. <laughs> so before you make you know, sweeping changes like that, you'll definitely want to back up your log. In my case, I already have it backed up because I haven't sent it anywhere. So now that I've done that, I should be able to click my upload to, QS, to Logbook of the World. Type in my password. There should be one record in there. You can see that if you did not see any errors, you can send the signed file by the website by, to, by pressing the upload button. So we'll just do that. And uploading was successful. Close. So that's that. If we want to uh, download data from uh, SQL, from uh, Logbook of the World, you can go ahead and do that. You know, return QSL records. So generally, if you've changed your call sign, like I've changed my call sign, 2009, 10, 30, um, you can download data from the website, and this way you can update your log. Now doing it like this is probably not recommended because it's a rather large log file for that time period.
You should always check a more recent time period. I'd say, you know, within the last six months. Generally, uh, you know, people do get onto Logbook of the World and confirm stuff years ago. It's not very common, but it does happen. Um, and, you know, maybe once in a while you'll want to override that date to go backwards a little bit further. I haven't done it in a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let it run this time and, and, and test the import for your viewing pleasure. So when it matches it up, it'll show you which, which ones it's confirmed. So these are the new confirmations that I've had. And as you can see, most of them are recent. But look at these uh, back here from 2013, 2012. So it is possible that people will be confirming you from, you know, a great distance in the past. I mean, 2012, this is 2017. So I mean, it's five years ago, you know, just, just under five years ago. And then your error log if you find stuff that people are trying to confirm in here, you can uh, run this error log against stuff and your existing log and see if maybe you had the call sign incorrect or a mode or something like that. Generally, the mode will auto-correct itself. Um, the band generally won't. <laughs> the time won't and the date won't. Um, so yeah, you, you can always go through the log and, and find these. Sometimes these are phantoms. They don't, you never really made the contact. It's somebody else's miskeying. So, you, you take these with a grain of salt. Um, like this one I probably will put in my log because I probably did do that. I'll have to check. <laughs> W1AW. So, uh, yeah. So there it is. That's that's basically your setup to get your log in here. And, uh, you know, once you have your log book, you can go ahead and rebuild your statistics. Um, and then you can see your, your DXCC statistics and stuff like that. I don't really play around with this too much. Um, but there you go. You have your worked, confirmed, and, you know, based on your modes and stuff like that. Um, no big deal there. Other statistics you can run is worked all zones. You know, this, is, again, was built off the same list. You have that. Uh, you have your worked all states. And uh, you can see I have all states, almost all of them on 40 meters. We need to grab that last one, apparently. <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah, so the CQR log is, is great. Uh, you just type in a call sign, you know, any, let's just do any one RD and, um, it should automatically look up the person. So this is, uh, I believe Brian, I've worked him before. And if you've, uh, worked him, well, I worked him when he was, uh, distant. So let's do a, let's do one here. So there we go. So if I look up AD5A, uh, you know, brings up here in the top that I've worked in before back in 2016. Uh, looks like probably on a contest, I'm assuming, because um, I don't casually work CW. <laughs> and then, of course, my most recent contact with them. So there you go. There's there's everything we're going to cover this time. Next time, we'll go ahead and uh, set up those digital modes to start working. So. Uh, so, yeah. This has been Bill Stearns, NE4RD for Linux in the Hamshack, and uh, we'll see you next time.